So hopefully you already saw part one of this mini-series where I ranked the cast of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc first. If not, I'll put a link in the description to it so you can check it out. I had some pretty good opinions in that video. But now, for part two, we're moving on to what I think is the best part of the Danganronpa series. Super Danganronpa 2, or Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. Is that what the English title of this game is called? I don't actually know. Maybe I should have checked that before I started recording. Eh, too late now. I think that the second game is far more interesting than the first game. Better characters, better plots and motivations, better trials. But it's still Danganronpa, so you know it's got a lot of things that suck. And, if you know me, I have a lot of opinions I like to tell myself that people care about. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into how I ordered my tier list. If you watched my last video, I'm using the same categories, but just in case you didn't, I'll go through a quick recap of them. I would take a bullet for you. These characters are my absolute favorites. I love them, I adore them, and if you come for them, I'm going to key your car. Okay, not really, but I'll make a really big frowny face at you, and it won't be very nice. Very good. Thank you for existing. These characters may not be my all-time favorites, but I do like them a lot. I don't really think there's anything wrong with them, they're just not like top tier for me, you know? I think they're good, I like them, and I'm glad they're in the game. Which leads us into, do you have to be here? Do I hate these characters? No. But I'm also just like, alright, you're also here, I guess. Not really these characters' biggest fans. If they were removed from the game altogether, I probably wouldn't even notice. I'd rather read dirt than look at your sprites. Do I hate these characters? Yes! Maybe I should rename this into I want to pound you into the dirt because god, I can't stand these characters. Was that a little aggressive? Yeah, but I'm a Taurus, so I have a lot of opinions. And lastly, this category doesn't have a name other than... <sighs> You'll see what I'm going to be using this for. Alright, we're ready to start ranking now. We'll start with Sonya Nevermind, and I'm going to say right now, we're starting off very strong. Sonya is definitely one of the best characters in this game. A princess who has an obsession with serial killers? Come on, what's better than that? Don't even answer, because there's nothing. Actually, one of my favorite scenes in the game was right before Mahiru's body discovery, when Kazuichi and Hajime are sitting in the diner waiting for the girls to come in, and Kazuichi's being all, like creepily excited about getting to see Sonya in a bikini, and the girl just walks in in a full-on wetsuit. When I tell you, I screamed. I adore Sonya, and every time she told Kazuichi to shut up, just added years onto my life. Now we have Monomi. I'm like, kinda torn on this one. I feel like I've had my mind made up on most of these characters, but not that I'm looking at her, I'm like, eh, think I'm just gonna put her in do you have to be here. It's not like I hate Monomi or anything. I think she's got some funny moments, and watching her dangle from the ceiling in every trial is hilarious. But I don't know. I think she can just be kind of annoying sometimes. Maybe it's just me. Very funny when everyone either ignores her or yells at her to go away, though. And like, her design is cute, so I guess there's that. But she loses points for the diaper because let's be real, it's very weird. Come on, you were thinking that too. It's okay. You can admit it. But like, yeah, I'm whatever on Monomi. She says she's supposed to be their teacher, but like... Chisa was better. Okay, moving on. Unlike Monami, I know exactly where I want to put Kazuichi. Okay, look. I had some moments where I'm like, eh, he's not so bad. But as I replayed the game and saw him again and all the weird and creepy lines he had towards the girls, especially towards Sonya, yeah, that ain't it, Chief. Which is a shame, because if he weren't a weirdo pervert, I'd actually think he's super funny. I love the part of him that's just a little bitch is always screaming and crying about everything. Also, the title of Ultimate Mechanic is super cool, so the fact that it went to Kazuichi... <sighs> Alright. Like, I'd literally trade almost anyone from the cast to be a part of the final survivors over him. Almost anyone. Important keyword. Now's the part where I'm getting a little confused. Why is this tier list counting Nekomaru and Mekomaru as two different 
characters. They're they're the same character. He he just has like a robot body for like the second half of the game. All right, I'm just gonna use classic Nekomaru to sort, and I guess Mechamaru will just chill down here. Nekomaru though is a very good. Thank you for existing. I really like Nekomaru. I love the gag where he looks like he should be like the ultimate wrestler or something like that. But he's like just the ultimate team manager. But like he's super hype about it. This is a himbo through and through and I adore him for that. Him and Akane are himbo and herbo solidarity. We should all thank them for that. Oh, Pekko. Oh, Pekko. I love Pekko so much. I'll say it again if you didn't hear me. I love Pekko so much. I love her design, character, voice, talent, everything. Like, I always thought she was a cool character, but when she was revealed as Mahiru's killer and her whole story with Fuyuhiko was revealed, that shit had me clutching my heart. I think out of all the games, Pekko's execution was definitely the saddest. Like, she only found out about Fuyuhiko's feelings towards her right before she died, and she died protecting him. Oh, don't even get me started about it. When I was replaying the game after the chapter was over, I literally had to go watch Danganronpa 3 Side Hope in order to console myself. I literally had to be like, it's okay. Pekko's alive. Look at her. She's alive. It's okay. Yeah, I love her. What is with this tear maker? Usami's the same exact character as Minomi, just with the different name and design. So we're gonna skip her and she can chill down here with Mechamaru. They're just vibing, don't worry about it. But now, appropriately following Pekka was Fihiko, and I'm putting him right where he belongs. You know where that is. Right next to Pekko. Even when Fihiko was being a grade-A asshole in the beginning of the game, I still liked him. Like, he wasn't one of my favorites, but I thought he was a cool character. But then after Pekko's execution, when he went through his character arc of trying to be nicer and to work with the others, his character arc is literally so good. He doesn't become a softie, but you can still easily tell he's got a heart. Plus, he's a baby-faced gang leader. He's the ultimate Yakuza, and look at his little blushy cheeks! Whoever designed him deserves a raise. Okay, hold on. Let me try to properly introduce this one. <clears throat> Gundam Tanaka. Feared by the devil himself, us pitiful humans cannot even begin to comprehend the extent of his arcane power. But we can comprehend how bad my Gundam voice is. Listen, I'm going to say it. If you don't love Gundam, you're wrong! It's not an opinion. It's a fact! Have you heard the way he speaks? Have you seen his four dark devas of destruction? There's no way you can't like that. He's ridiculous and over-the-top in the best way possible, and the best part about it is he's got a deeper character than just comic relief. I mean... Okay, let me apologize for bringing up the Grape House and Strawberry House trial because I hate it, and yes, that's because I'm too stupid to grasp it clearly. But anyway, him and Nekomaru doing what they did just because they didn't want everyone to starve to death? Yeah, not all men. You're right, Gundam would never. Let's move on to Hajime Hinata. If you watched my first Danganronpa ranking video, you got a glimpse into my feelings towards him. I think Hajime is a great protagonist and I like him a lot. When I first saw him, I was worried he was going to be another Makoto, so essentially a board of wood, but I was so relieved I was wrong. I like that he's got a deep character and I like that he's actually gets like pretty pessimistic about, you know, a literal murder game. Instead of being, oh no, I can never doubt my friends. No. Hajime keeps it real. Also, I like the twist that he was just a reserve course student and not even an ultimate. Like, Hajime was literally just a guy. And he's still way better than Makoto. So, Hiyoko Sayonji. I don't know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion or not, but I'm standing by it, so come at me if your taste is wrong. Is she mean? Yes. Is she a little bitch? Yes. Does she smell because she barely showered on the island? You bet. And I love that about her. First off, very cool when girls are mean. Second off, she's just mean in the over-the-top, ridiculous way, and it makes it super funny. Plus, the fact she automatically starts crying when ever anyone's even a little mean to her back. Yeah, I get how you can be wrong and not like her, but I really like her. 
Also, her and Mahiru, we can all agree they're girlfriends, right? Good. Because they are, and I don't make the rules. Anyway, I love Hiyoko, but I wouldn't come within 15 feet of her just in case she smells as bad as everyone said she did. Hibuki Miyota, ultimate musician. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna put her where she belongs. I've always loved Ibuki, and I've always thought she was a super fun character. Her design is super cute, and I really like her quirky personality. Also, I love how she's the ultimate musician, but Hajime basically cringes whenever she plays music for everyone. I don't have a ton of deep thoughts on Ibuki. I just like her, and I think that's enough. Uh, um, I'm just gonna... Uh... So Hajime was experimented on, and he became Mizuru, who has all the Hope's Peak ultimate talent ever, and is also the ultimate hope. But not like Makoto's ultimate hope, it's different! Uh, this plot was kind of confusing for my last brain cell for some reason, so I'm just gonna be moving on. I'm not calling him by his first name. This is Komaida. Remember when I said you'd find out what that last category is used for? You could probably see it coming. Very ashamed to admit that the first time I played through this game, he was one of my favorites, if not my top favorite. Also ashamed to admit that I still love him. Like, I love him, but I also kind of want to hit him with my car. He's just like... He, he's just... He's like... If you don't know who he is, you just have to experience him. That's all I have to say. Komaida's my sleep paralysis demon, and I'm not even that mad about it. Also, I saw on the wiki he's like possibly in love with Hajime or something, so uh, we love that for him. Mahiru Koizumi. She's a cute girl who's always going on about how she hates boys and how they smell. We have no choice but to stand. It's funny, my first time playing through the game, I wasn't really a fan of her. I'm not even sure why. Just something about her bothered me. But when I replayed the game, I instantly warmed up to her and started really liking her. I don't know where my bad taste came from, but I'm glad I fixed that for myself. I don't think she's like the best character or anything, but I do like how she tries to be a leader despite how scared and stressed she gets about everything. I really thought she was going to be Hajime's investigation partner like Kyoko was from Makoto, so I'm surprised she went so quick. Glad Komaida was kind of like that partner though. Sort of. Now for Monokuma. Honestly, I think he's hilarious. Yeah, he's just Junko's evil stuffed animal, but come on. The fish scene from the first game literally gets me every time. Plus, I think it's super interesting that in this game, he's forced to stick to the rules since Junko is just an AI here. Again, I don't really have any deep opinions here. I just think Monokuma is objectively super funny, even if he's a murder teddy bear. In fact, he's funny because he's a murder teddy bear. Chaki Nanami. I'm just gonna... A nice girl who's also a weirdo and just slightly a freak? We love that. I was surprised that Mahiru wasn't the investigation partner, but I was super glad it was Chiaki. I think she's got a really endearing personality, and the fact she's a gamer is... so funny. Like, dude, I'd sub to Chiaki on Twitch. And before you ask, Yes, I'm part of the club that was distraught to find out Chiaki was the traitor because that meant she was the one who technically killed Komaida. I know this version of Chiaki is technically just an AI, and we saw the real one in the third anime, but like, is it bad that I like the AI version better? Don't tell me they're the same character because they're definitely not and I will die on that hill. Oh, I was waiting for this one. I was waiting patiently for this one. Akane is my top favorite character in this game. She might even be my top favorite Danganronpa character, period. I know. Pretty big title, but I feel like I can't even properly express how much I love Akane. She's just so... dumb. There's nothing going on in that head except maybe elevator music. Her rancorous love of all food? Girl, me too. The fact she's always ready to throw hands and fight someone? I love a girl who's ready to throw a punch. Her sympathetic backstory, how she had to take care of all her younger siblings, I adore Akane. She's my favorite, she's perfect, I don't want to hear any slander on her name or there will be arson. I definitely like a lot of the Danganronpa 2 cast as you can see. I think a lot of them are really good characters and together they make a strong cast. But Teru Teru? 
I hated him from his first few sentences. He's a creepy pervert, and I was relieved he was gone so quickly. Like, yeah, he has that whole sympathetic thing with his sick mom, but, like, doesn't excuse the creep. Still hate him. Wish the best for his mom, though. Moving on. Oh, Mikan. Oh, Mikan. She deserved so much better. Like, figuratively speaking, she deserved better in the game, though I did think it was super interesting when her despair self came out and she was talking about Junko, but I also mean literally deserved better. I feel like they used a lot of her just for fan service, and I know the whole, oh, they're actually adults because their memories got stolen, so it's okay, but the whole time you're playing the game, you think she's the age of a high school student, so it's like, yeah, creepy, not cool. Mikan deserves so much better. Here's the thing. I'm aware the imposter was supposed to be a fat joke. Like, haha, look how fat Byakuya got. It's funny, right? Well, joke's on them because, uh, they're a really good character. While they're really good at impersonating Byakuya, they're still just, like, so caring. Like, their determination to get everyone out safe and alive so they try to be the leader, the fact that they try to protect everyone but just wound up getting killed, felt so bad, dude. I'll never forgive Terror Terror for that one. Yes, I know Terra Terra was also trying to protect them all, but I hate him. Anyway, stand the ultimate imposter, because they deserve it. So, now that this is all done, the next logical game to rank characters from would be the third game, right? But I never played that one, so, uh, that'll be interesting if I ever decide to do it. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, it'd mean the world if you could subscribe or hit thumbs up. Or hit thumbs down if you hated it, that's fine too. Thanks, though. Bye, guys!